right, we're live. I figured this out. <laughs> Facebook changed how they present everything and I was trying to get the live set up with um, the new view and it was not working. So that's why I'm a little behind. Okay, we'll give it just a minute to see if people join. But phones, I can see what is going on. Okay. Okay. Give it just another minute. All right, well, we are, I am already late, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I am going to recap my March budget and spending, and then I'm gonna talk about the April No Spend Challenge that the City Girl Savings Facebook group um, decided to join in. So if you are watching live, say hi. If you're catching the replay, say hi. Um, let me know how you're doing. So before I dive into my March results, um, let me walk through how to complete a month end money review, or at least what I do. So at the end of every month, you want to look at your budget, your spending, and your goals. Hi, Lena. Thanks for joining. Um, so you want to look at your budget for the month, your spending for the month, and then your goals. So when you're looking at your budget for the month, so right now we would be looking at the budget you created for March, you wanna ask yourself, did everything go as planned? And if not, what do I need to change for April? So the only way you're really gonna know that is if you're tracking your spending. And that's where looking at your spending for the month comes in. Did you overspend in any area? Did you underspend in any area? And um, if so, how can you use that information to move forward into the next month so that you can either stay on track or give yourself a little bit more room with your budget? And then lastly, you wanna look at your goals. So were you saving for anything specific in March? Were you putting extra towards your debt payments? Whatever goal you were working towards, you wanna to actually look at that and see, did you make the progress you were supposed to make? If not, what do you need to do in April to either make up for lost time or get back on track? So that's a very high level overview of how to complete your month end money review. I have plenty of videos on it. so. If you need a more in-depth, detailed video, just let me know and I will shoot you the link. Um, so let me get into my March review. I am going to pull up my tracker and, okay. So let's start with the positive first because I'm all about uh, focusing on the good. I profited about $135 for the month. So what that means is I made $135 more um, than I spent. So I was in the green for the month, which is good. And now when I say that, I'm also factoring in savings. So savings to me is considered a budget category. Obviously it's not spending, but I do count it um, in my overall numbers. So the 135 profit that I have is in addition to my savings for the month. Um, so for savings, I saved about $50 more than I planned to, um, and that was because I have Digit, right? So Digit takes small amounts of money from your checking account, move it to your Digit account, and voila, you're accumulating savings with your Digit account. So saved a little more than I had budgeted, which is never a bad thing. Um, Let's see, housing, business as usual. I have a set amount going into my housing account every single um, pay period. So that usually never changes. Personal bills, so I was over budget um, for a few reasons. One, uh, it was my brother's birthday, so I had to make sure to get him situated. Um, I could have put that under fun spending, but I put it under personal bills because it's a necessity. I gotta take care of my brother. Um, and then my cell phone bill was higher than it usually is because I was finally charged for um, my Antigua trip last month. 
Um, so the charges finally showed up on March's bill. Groceries, business as usual, nothing special there. It was right on track. Um, transportation, auto, gas. Only spent $17.81 to fill up my car. <laughs> In case you don't know, my car is old, so it's not a, a gas guzzler, which is a good thing. Plus, I work from home normally, so I don't really drive much. So I was under budget and transportation. Um, moving on to meals out. So I spent just under $260 for the month in meals out, which I will say is good for me, but that's still over budget. So um, need to tighten it up, tighten it up there. Um, and then fun spending. So I invested in a um, custom health wellness plan. Um, I wanted to support somebody that I had met a few months ago and that's what she does in her business. So that hiked up my fun spending budget. Also too, I got lash extensions refilled um, prior to everything closing down for coronavirus. Um, so that also spiked up my fund budget for the month. So overall, though, I profited, so I'm happy. There are definitely areas of opportunity that I have. Um, but since we are moving into April and the City Girl Savings Facebook group has graciously agreed to do a no spend month, I should be able to um, bounce back and recoup. So. What I wanted to also spend some time on is just outlining some of the rules for a no spend challenge. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, but I want to cover them anyways. Um, so let's talk about what's not included, meaning what can you spend money on in a no spend challenge? So obviously you got to spend money on your normal bills, rent, utilities, cell phone, whatever your normal bills are. That's excluded. You have to spend money on that. Um, you also have to spend money on your living essentials or any essential expenses that help you make money so they get you to work. So think um, gas for your car so you can get to work if you are even still going to work um, or transportation costs. Um, other living essentials would be things like groceries or um, cleaning supplies. So things that are essential to your survival and that you would need to spend money on, that's excluded from the challenge. Um, so what is uh, included in the no spend challenge? So what you should not be spending money on if you are participating in this challenge, strictly non-necessities. So for me, that would be like iced coffees or going out to eat or takeout right now or um custom wellness plans things like that things that are not essential to your survival you shouldn't be spending money on them if you are participating in a no spend challenge um and that's also like any wants right we can kind of convince ourselves we need things so um don't do that right if it's not essential to your survival you don't need it right now and you shouldn't spend money on it if you really want to succeed in this challenge and that's that's pretty much it, right? Everything else either stays in your account, so stays in your checking account, or it's moved to savings. However you want to do that, that's fine, as long as you're not spending money on things you don't need. We are going to give this a go for the entire month of April. Um, we can do it, right? We got this. So that's pretty much all it is. Share what works for you in the Facebook group. Um, share where you're struggling or where you have any wins or where you've even saved extra money on normal expenses. I would love to hear. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps us up. Let me know if you're doing a March budget review. I would love to know how that goes. If you are participating in the no spend challenge for April, you got about, what time is it? 545. So you got about six and a half hours to buy whatever you need because tomorrow we are tightening it up which i need so i'm excited about that so i will see you guys soon or in the facebook group hope you have a fantastic night and talk to you later bye everyone